My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 68. Lesson number 68, day, day 3068, 3000 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 68, we are on page 263. We are in the process of working on problem number 21. The very last problem that you see on that page, on page number 263, that is. Problem number 21, we did part A and B yesterday. Today we'll do part 3, part C. Let's take a look at it. We are given a function. It looks something like this 5 minus x plus 20 all squared. And we are being asked to, it says for each of the following function, give its domain. We are being asked to describe its domain, uh, give the domain and the description. We give the domain, we'll give the range, we'll give the range, even though they don't ask for it. We'll provide a description, we'll plot it, we'll provide the x and the y intercept, x and y intercept. And if we can do all of that, then we have done the job, we have answered the question that they're looking for. Let's get going, shall we? Now before I get too much into it, before I get too much into it, I just want to give you a quick reminder, a quick pep talk. And I have said this thing many a times and I'm going to say it one more time today and perhaps many, many more times in the future. It is very important. It is vital. It is essential. It is crucial. It is absolutely imperative that you watch this video in the proper sequence. Today is day number 68, which means that I take it for granted, which means that I assume that you have watched day 1 through, 60, 1 through 67 already and have done the work. Because it builds on the stuff that we learned in the past. I, we cannot keep, keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again. First of all, it will take too, blo too much bloody time. And secondly, we run a risk of boring the pants off you. Do you understand? We do not want to do either. So, make sure that you watch, that you watch the previous videos. In the last few days, we've been talking about parabolas. We have done many problems dealing with parabolas. And if you have watched those videos, then you will understand what we are about to do now because I'm not going to go into, as I said, in the details. Here's what's going on. The, the parabolas, parabola is usually, the, the most basic parabola looks something like this. That's it. Y is equal to x squared. Y is equal to x squared. Let's start with that. Y is equal to x squared. What does this parabola look like? Even though I told you that I'm not going to do that, I'm going to, it looks like I'm going to briefly do it. What does this parabola look like? It's, it's, it's very simple. It's y is equal to x squared right here. It's a simple. This is the parabola in its simplest form. There are, there are no complications. It is sitting at the origin. It, it, it doesn't have x intercepts here because it just touches the x axis at, at, at zero. It's tangent to it. It has no y intercept. That's all. Simplest one. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. What if we had something like x plus x plus 20 all squared instead of, instead, of, instead of simply x squared? What does it mean? What does it tell you? It tells us, listen carefully, it tells us that before, before is this part. Before is this part. Before, let's call it fx. This is the fx. Before, y was 0 when x was 0. This is the before part, f of x. Now, now, which is with g of x, which is, what, which is what this is. Now, when is y going to be 0? Look at this function and tell me, when is y going to be 0? Let's put, it, let's put this function, the g of x, is getting kind of crowded. Let's put it here. y is equal to, it says, x plus 20 all squared. In this function, when is y going to be 0? Well, y is going to be 0 y is going to be 0 when this quantity is 0. And when is this quantity 0? This quantity is going to be 0 when x is equal to negative 20. You see? So which means that y is going to be 0 when x is negative 20. Before, y was 0 when x was 0. Now, 
y is going to be 0 when x is negative 20. Let's put this negative 10, negative 20, right here. So what does it tell you? We don't have to do every single point here, as I said before. What does it tell you? It simply tells you that it has shifted 20 units to the right. It has shifted 20 units to the right. This part tells us, let's erase all of this thing. This part tells us that this parabola has shifted 20 units, 20 units, I just, I just said a second ago right, but I meant to say left, 20 units to the left, as you can see it's going to the left. That's the part that is counterintuitive, even though it's positive 20, it shifts to the left, it is shifting to the left. And you don't have to memorize it, you simply have to understand it. Ask yourself one very simple question. Before y was 0, when x was 0, now in this equation, when is y going to be 0? The answer is y is going to be 0 when x is negative 20. Well, there we go. Instead of being x being 0, x has to be negative 20 for, for y to be 0. It has shifted 20 units to the left. Now let's introduce the next complication. Let's introduce the next complica complication. Before, y was equal to x squared. Let's call this f y, fx. We're calling this we're calling this red one gx. Now let's introduce a new one. Let's call it h of x. Y is equal to x squared plus five. What's going to happen now? Let's erase this g of x, we don't need any more. We're just going to do one thing at a time. We don't. So, if we had a parabola, if we had a parabola, a standard parabola, sitting at the origin, y is equal to x squared, and now we have a new parabola, which is y is equal to x squared plus 5, what does it tell us? It tells us that before, y was 0 when x was 0. Now, when x is 0, now when x is 0, y is going to be positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. What this tells you is that, I'm going okay, to listen carefully, what, what, this, what this function tells us is that the value of y is going to be for each given value of x. For each given value of x, the value of y is going to be 5 more than before. The value of y is going to be 5 more than before for each given value of x, which means it is the same parabola, but it's sitting 5 units to the top. It is going up, shifted five minutes up. Are you with me? Very good. Let's take a look at what we have. So we're going to rewrite this thing first of all as, because you see we have to write this in the, in the form of, we have to write it in this form, x plus a whole square plus b. And in this case, it tells us that it shifted, it is shifted a units a units to the to the left and b units up this one we're going to write it in b units up this is the b units right here so we have to write it x plus a squared so we're going to write that first so it's going to be negative x plus 20 all squared and then the power positive 5 let's see what it tells us let's see what it tells us So what does it tell us? It tells us three things. It tells us three things. First of all, we have a negative in front of it. What does that tell us? The negative tells us that this particular parabola is upside down. This particular parabola is inverted. Inverted. As I said, upside down. That's the first thing it tells us. Second thing, the positive 20, the positive 20, positive 20 tells us that it shifted 20 units to the left or to the right? To the left. It's, as I said, it's counterintuitive. If it's positive, it goes to the left. 20 units to the left. That's the second thing it tells us. What else does it tell us? It also tells us that it has shifted shifted 5 units up. 
In other words, this quantity here, the positive 20 and the positive 5, they tell us where the, where the, where the parabola is going to be sitting. But the place where the parabola is sitting, it has a name. Do you know the name? What is it called? The point where the parabola sits. Do you know what its name is? It is called the vertex. It is called the vertex. And the vertex of this particular parabola, I'm going to erase this and we don't need it anymore. The vert vertex of this particular parabola, the vertex of this particular parabola is described right here. Shift it 20 units to the left. So it's negative 20 and 5 units up and positive 5. Since it's sitting at negative 20 and positive 5, it also tells us that the line of symmetry, line of symmetry, is it going to be x equals to negative 20? x equals to negative 20. And as always, we are running out of room, so I have no choice but to erase all of this thing so that we can plot the bloody thing. Let's plot it. Negative 20, let's call it negative 10 and negative 20. Negative 10, negative 20. Negative 20, positive 5. Let's call positive 5 up here. It is sitting here. It is sitting here and it is upside down. It is upside down. So it looks, some, it's going to look something like this. What we don't know at this point, what we don't know at this point is where does it cut the x-axis? Where it cuts the x-axis are its roots, are its roots, because those are the solutions to the quadratic equation. And we also have to figure out where does it cut the y-axis. Let's put it in a different color. And until we find the exact value, we do not know exactly what shape it's going to be. Maybe, maybe the maybe the word because the y-axis is way down here. Who knows? I'm just I, I we have no numbers right now. We're going to find out in a second. Let's first find the x-intercept. Let's find the x-intercept, shall we? Which is same as saying let's find the solution to this quadratic equations, quadratic equation rather. And as always, again, this is something we have done in the past. As always, finding the solution to the quadratic equation means we have three choices. We can either factorize. We can either factorize, let's erase all this, we, we don't need any of this thing. But you can see this is a line of symmetry, the line of symmetry is right here. The line of symmetry is right here because it's symmetric along that line and then this line x equals negative 20. How do we know that? Because this is the, this is, this is the, this, these are the, these are the coordinates of vertex, negative 20 and positive 5. That's how we know so the coordinates of vertex are negative 20. In positive 5 and that's how we know that the line of symmetry this is going to be the line of symmetry line of symmetry equals the line of symmetry is x equals negative 20 it's symmetric around that line what was I talking about a second ago ah, we have three choices we can either factorize or we can use a method called completing the square completing the square or we can, or we can, use quadratic, quadratic equation. One of those three methods we can use to find the solutions to this equation. Factorizing, in order to factorize, we have to rewrite this equation. I don't know where I went, why I went there, but since I did go there, I can't, we can't just abandon it. So let's rewrite it very quickly. We're going to rewrite this equation. It says y is equal to y is equal to positive 5 minus x plus 20 very quickly, okay? We're gonna open it. Positive 5 minus x squared. We're gonna open this thing. 40x plus 400. I hope I did not lose you already, because this is the same as x plus y, x plus 20 whole squared. Let's open the parentheses and we end up with 5 minus x squared minus 40x because this minus is outside minus 40x minus 40 which is same as negative x squared minus 40x minus 395 395 we are always running out of room let's put 395 up there because I don't want to raise the raise the graph yet 
Let's look at 395 very quickly. Do you understand? Okay, watch, watch what happens. 395, if we try to find the factors of it, it's not divisible by 2 obviously because it's, it's, a, it's an odd number. Is it divisible by 3? Well, 3 is divisible by 3, 9 is divisible by 3, but 5 is not. So it's not divisible by 3 because the sum of the digits is not going to be divisible by 3. Let's try 5. How many 5 does 3 have? 3 has 0 5s. If 3 has 0 5s, what happens to that 3? 3 goes and joins the 9, becomes 39. And how many 5 does 39 have? We know 40, 40 has 8 5s, so this is going to have 7 5s. 7 5s are 35. After we take away 35, after we take away 35, after we take away 35 from 39, we have a remainder of 4. What happens to that 4? 4 goes and joins the 5, it becomes 45, and 45 has 7 9. As you can see, it is made up, of, made up of two prime numbers, 5 and 79. There is no way we can find two numbers. We have to find two numbers. Here, we have to find two numbers whose product happens to be negative 395 and whose sum happens to be negative 40. But we have only two choices, 5 and a 79. With 5 and a 79, the product is not going to be 375 and sum definitely is not going to be negative 40. You see? What does it tell us? It tells us that the factorization is not going to work here. Factorization is not going to work here. Why? Because the solution is not going to be integers. Factorization only works when the solution, the roots, are whole numbers, integers. This thing tells us we cannot factorize it. It cannot be done by factorizing. Our only solution is either completing the square or quadratic formula. The good news is that if we were to use completing the square method, it's already been done for us. It's already been done for it. It is given to us in this form. The square has already been completed. X plus 20 whole squared. That, that part is already done. Let's, let's continue with this thing when you find the solutions. We, we don't need any of this thing now. We need the room. So we're going to continue. We're going we're to continue with this equation here. This equation right here. And we're going to set y is equal to 0. And that's where y is 0. y is 0 here. y is 0 here. We're trying to figure out the x-intercept. So, it says negative x plus 20 whole squared, what, what happens, what, what happens, plus 5 has to equal to 0. You see that? Let's bring 5 to the other side, which means negative x plus 20 whole squared equals negative 5. We have a negative here, a negative here, let's multiply the entire equation by negative 1, and we end up with x plus 20 whole squared equals 5. What, what happens, okay? Now we're going to take the square root of it, square root of this side, x plus 20 whole squared, and when we take a square root of this thing, there are going to be two answers, positive and negative root 5. Because whether it's positive, positive root 5, when we square it, it equals 5. Or whether it is negative root 5, negative times negative is positive. Negative times root 5, negative times negative is positive, and it gives us 5. So it has two solutions, obviously. It has two solutions because right here, it cuts the x-axis at two points. So there we go. So, x plus 20 whole squared, square root of that, the whole point of taking the square root of that is that, that is that the square root negates the square. They undo each other. And we end up with x plus 20 is equal to plus or minus root 5, which tells us that x is equal to plus or minus root 5, root 5 minus 20, root 5 minus 20. And how much does root 5 equal to? This is again a digression. How much does root 5 equal to? Root 5 equals to root 5 equals to approximately 2.2. Not exactly, but approximately. We did that yesterday in the yesterday's video. We have done it also many, many times before. And if you still do not get hang of it, I want you to watch a video. The video is called T's, T's, T's Math Day 2. T-E-A-S. T is as in plural of tea that you drink. T is math day two. Don't worry about what T is. I know you're not here for T is. You are here for GRE. But T is is another exam that I uh, tutor in. I tutor. Uh, that's what I do for a living all day, every day. I, I sit in front of the computer. I tutor people one to one online. And one of the exams that I tutor is called T is test of essential academic skills. It's an exam people take to get in a nursing school. Just, oh, you don't have to worry about any of that, just type in T's math, T's math, day two. Just like if you were, if you were searching for GRE math, you would simply type in GRE math, day, th day three, 3061 and will pop right up. This will pop right up. 
watch that video and learn how to approximate the roots. You must know the approximate value of root 2, approximate value of root 3, approximate value of root 5. They come in quite handy. In addition to that, you must also know your squares 1 through 20. And that video will teach you all of that. So, the square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. We're going to quick it and finish it up very quickly, which means that x is equal to, approximately equal to, no longer, not, no longer exact, approximately equal to positive 2.2 minus 20 or x is equal to, approximately equal to, negative 2.2 minus 20. Well, when we take a positive root, it's going to give us negative, but 20 minus 2, uh, negative 20 and a positive 2 would have been negative 18, so it's going to be negative 17.8. Or, or negative 22.2. Well, there you go. There you go. We just found the points. This is, you see it's not, it's not drawn properly, or you can clearly see it's not drawn properly, because it cuts at negative 17.8, how can this be negative 17.8 when this is negative 10? And how can, if from here to here is 10, how can from here to here be only 2.2? Because this is 20, this is supposed to be negative 22.2. So let's redraw it. Because I was drawing it freehand. We had no idea where the points were going to be, but now we know. So let's redraw it. Let's redraw it a little bit better. And watch what happens. First of all, let's put negative 20 here. If negative 20 is here, negative 10 is here, negative 15 is here, negative 25 is going to be somewhere here. It's going to be crowded. It's going to be crowded. And I have to draw it in that way. And I made a mistake. I just made a silly mistake. I just realized it. Let's put a 5 up here. And you will see what I mean by silly mistake in a second. The way I plotted it. There. So, 22.2. 22.2 somewhere here. Somewhere here. This point right here, we are saying is approximately 22.2. Or if you want the exact value, it is exactly equal to root 5 minus 20. Oh, sorry. Uh, minus, minus root 5 minus, minus 20 minus root 5 right here. Minus root 5, this is the negative root, minus root 5 and minus 20. That's it. Minus 20, minus root 5. And this is somewhere here, it's going to be 17.8 approximately. And that is equal to negative, negative 20 and positive root 5. These are the exact, these are the exact values. These are the approximate values. But as you can see, it's getting quite silly. It's getting quite silly because it looks like this. Well, where is it going to cut? Where is it going to cut the x-axis? Way down here. Way down there. As you can see, I have to sort of stretch it. It's not like this. It comes down straight and it cuts the x-axis, uh, rather the y-axis way down there somewhere on the floor. What is that point? What is that point? Do you wonder? We already know what these points are. Where does it cut the x-axis? Or rather y-axis? Well, it cuts the y-axis where x is equal to 0. Where x is equal to 0, where x is equal to 0, it cuts the y-axis. What is that value? Do you wonder? Let's find out from here, shall we? Let's find out from here. And we'll find out we know this x coordinate is 0. What is the y coordinate? Where, what is, where does it cut it? And you will see it's going to be some very large number, some very large negative number. y y is equal to minus x plus 20 squared plus 5. Is that what it says? There we go. Let's put in x equal to 0. If you x is 0, this is what we get. Minus 0 plus 20 is just 20, and 20 squared is 400. Voila. There we go. This thing is 395. This thing is negative, negative 395. There we go. So I think we have done the job that they were looking for 
we have given a good description of the parabola, the description being that the line of symmetry, the line of symmetry is x is equal to 20, x is equal to negative 20 rather, its vertex is, its vertex is negative 20 and positive 5, it cuts the x-axis at negative 20 minus root 5 and negative 20 plus root 5, it cuts the y-axis at negative 395. Only thing that we have not done so far are the range and the domain. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about them. What is the domain of this function? Are there any, are there any restrictions on the value that x can take? The answer is no. There are no restrictions. You can see x has no restriction. The domain here is set of, set of all real numbers. What about the range? Are there any restrictions on y? And the answer again is no. y can be any value it wants us to be. It's set of all real numbers. And that's about it. That's about it. Now if you like, if you like, we can learn together as to how to find a solution. Are we going to find the same solution? Remember, solutions are these. We are saying that x is equal to, this is what we are claiming. Let's put it up here. We are saying that x is equal to, right here, negative 20, negative 20 plus or minus root 5. x is equal to negative 20 plus or minus root 5. Can we get the same solution if we were to use quadratic formula? Is it possible? The answer of course is yes. Can we do it? Well, that's a different story. Should we do it? Let's do it together and let's find the solution of this equation using the quadratic formula. This equation right here, right here, we're going to use the quadratic formula and see, and see if we can get the same solution as we got by completing the square. Let's begin, shall we? We're going to rewrite this equation. y is equal to negative x plus 20 whole square is same as x squared plus 40x, we just did it a little while ago, plus 400 because 20 squared is 400, plus 5. With me so far? Let's open the parentheses, we get negative x squared minus 40x minus 400 plus 5. Minus x squared minus 40x, negative 400 and positive 5 is negative 395. You see, again the same thing. When x is equal to 0, this term drops out and that term drops out and y equals to negative 395 right here. When x is equal to 0, y is negative 395. But it's way down here because obviously, obviously if you're claiming that from here to here is 5, you see the scale, let me just digress for a second, the scale do not have to be the same on the x and the y axis. You can have a different scale. For example, this is what I mean by different scale. Watch for here. It's perfectly okay to say that from here to here is positive 1. And it's perfectly okay to say that from here to here is positive 1000. It's perfectly okay. The scales on x and y do not have to be the same. But scale, of course, cannot change in the same axis. If you're telling me that from here to here is 1, then you cannot proudly also inform me that from here to here is 5. That is, that's damn silly. That's stupid. It cannot possibly go from 1 to 5 here if this distance is 1. The scale cannot change along the axis. But two different axes can most certainly can have different axes. As you can clearly see here, these are different axes. This is from here to here is 5. It's a different axis. As you can see from here to here is 10. But what I'm trying to make you understand is that if this distance is 5, then this, this distance from here looks to me like it's barely 4 times the amount. How can it be negative 395? It has to be negative 395 because I cannot plot it on the floor. So if in, order, in order for us to solve it, we had to artificially, we had to artificially take our parabola here, instead of going like this, we had to sort of artificially bend it, bend it and bring it down by force. In reality, it goes straight down forever, and it cuts it at negative 395. Do you understand? Well, let's continue. Let's continue with our quadratic equation. And now we're going to set y equal to 0. There we go. Here, our a is negative 1, our a is negative 1, our b is going to be negative 4, or negative 40 rather, and our c is equal to negative 395. And when we plug in this value in our quadratic formula, we better get that. 
since we no longer need the grass, we're going to do it here. And that will be the last thing in the video we'll do. You understand? The point of this problem, point of doing these exercises is not to solve this problem as you would in the real exam, obviously, because we're not taking the real exam. We are doing this thing for learning purposes. In a real exam, very rarely they will give you a luxury of spending a bloody hour, half an hour to do one problem. Do you understand? Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. You, you do not have luxury of spending an inordinate amount of time on one problem. But here we have for learning purposes. So if it takes us 45 minutes to do one problem, that's okay because we're learning different stuff. More than what they're asking for in reality. Let's do it. So x has to equal negative b. I hope you know your formula. x equals to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That's the formula. Negative b. Negative b. b itself is negative 40. So it's going to be negative, negative 40. I shouldn't have to explain all this. Do you understand? Minus b squared minus 40 squared plus or rather minus minus 4ac see i'm talking too much minus 4a which is negative 1 c which is negative 395 over 2a which is negative 1 and that's what we have to work on that's what we need to work on let's do it up here Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, we want to get that. So that gives us negative times negative is positive, so it's positive 40, plus or minus. Let's see what we get in the root sign. Shall we? Pay attention, okay? Pay attention, stay with me. First of all, we get negative 40 squared. Negative 40 squared. Negative times negative is positive, and 40 times 40, 4 times 4 is 16, so it's 1600. What about this quantity? Negative times negative times negative is going to be a negative quantity, obviously. And it's 4 times 90, 395. 4 times 395. We have to figure out that part and subtract from 1600. Do you know what that is? Well, if you don't know, you can figure it out. I'm not going to do it that way. Listen, here's what I'm going to do. Pay attention. See if you understand it. You have to have intuitive understanding of the numbers. Anybody can multiply them out and subtract the two and there is no fun in it. Is a, even a robot can do it and a computer can do it. Do you understand? But the computer does not have intuition. It doesn't have a gut feeling. It doesn't have any guts. Watch what is going on. Negative 40 times negative 40, would you agree that it's the same as 40 times 40, obviously? We're not going to worry about negative because negative is going to disappear. Negative times negative positive is, is negative times negative is positive. You understand? It's 40 times 40. Would you also agree that this is the same as 400 times 4? Because I simply took a 0. I simply took the 0 and give it to this guy. Pass it out and give it to this guy. Are you with me? So we have 400, four, 400 4s. How many 4s? 400 of them. And from that, we have to subtract 395. From that, we have to subtract, we have to subtract 395 4s. 395 4s. Well, if you subtract 395 4s from 400 4s, what are you supposed to be left with? Well, we should be left with 5 4s. There we go, that's how simple it is. And 5 4s are 20. 5 4s are 20. 5 4s. As a matter of fact, we're not even going to write it as 5 4s. We're going to write it as, we're not, as a matter of fact, we're not going to even write it as 20 here. We're going to write it as 5 4s. And of course, it's a positive quantity because we're subtracting, it's a, it's a bigger amount. 400 4s minus 395 4s should give us 5 4s. 5 4s over 2a, which is just negative 2 which is just negative 2. Do you understand? Why did we write it as 5 4s? Because what happens? The square root of 5 times 4 is same as the square root of 5 times the square root of 4, obviously. And the square root of 4 is just 2, so it's just the square root of 5 times 2. In other words, this quantity is same as 2 root 5. 2 root 5, which is what we're going to write here. 2 2 root 5. You understand? And now, and now,
we're going to divide this entire equation by 2. If we divide the entire, because this is 40 is a root a factor of 2, this is a factor of 2, because this is same as 2 times 20. So if we divide the whole thing by, by 2, we're going to end up with, and we're going to divide it by negative, negative 2. Uh, we're going to divide the whole thing by negative 2. So this positive 40 is going to, when you divide, when you divide positive 40 by a negative 2, it gives us negative 20. So it becomes negative 20, this 2 is going to cancel out with this 20, 2, and we're going to end up with positive or minus negative root 5. Well, finally, my God. And now we can proudly... There, yeah, we got what we were looking for. The solution is negative 20 plus or minus root 5. Negative 20 plus or minus root 5. Oh Lord. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Oh my Lord. We still have the last two parts, D and E, which will also require some discussion as to how to figure out the domain and the range of those two functions. There is some trick to it. We'll talk about those and also the shape, also the shape of those two functions. We'll talk about those those two, D and E, in the next video. Okay, bye now.